AP Biology, Chapter 17 from Gene to Protein. Our learning goal is to be able to explain the process of transcription and translation in eukaryotes. The success criteria is given a DNA sequence, determine the order of amino acids and the steps to make in a protein. These are the questions you should be able to answer by the end of this chapter. Remember that the uh, bold face stuff at the bottom here is AP Biology only. Everything else is both AP Biology and Honors Biology. Just a quick review, remember that ribosomes are involved with protein making and uh, today you're going to learn a little bit about how that happens. So um, remember ribosomes will chain together the amino acids in a sequence that will eventually fold into a three-dimensional protein and these proteins are important for a lot of different things. Ribosomes again are found in both um, prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. All living things have ribosomes because all living things use proteins to carry out chemical reactions within the cell. Proteins have a huge role in living things. They're involved uh, in enzymes. Enzymes are probably one of the biggest roles for uh, proteins. Uh, enzyme proteins are able to put together or break apart other molecules. Basically any kind of chemical reaction that happens in a body and you can almost uh, use the definition of life as a highly controlled set of chemical reactions. These chemical reactions are carried out by enzymes. Proteins are involved with structures like the fingernail proteins called keratin, collagen, connective tissue like in ligaments and tendons. Carriers and transport, those active transport channels, facilitate diffusion channels, we're all made of proteins. We have defense proteins called antibodies that we need to make. We have a lot of uh, contraction proteins, we're animals, so we have a lot of actin and myosin proteins that slide past each other to make our muscles move. We also have proteins like uh, insulin that are hormones that send signals throughout the body. And we could also store amino acids as proteins in various structures in plants. Now this is a root view of uh, AP biology uh, material. The correct order of amino acids is called the primary sequence of a pro uh, protein. And these are all held together by peptide bonds, covalent bonds. And this is determined by DNA triplets, and that's what we're going to learn about today. Once we have the primary structure of a protein, the linking of amino acids together to form the primary structure, the different R groups on the amino acids will form hydrogen bonds and form something called an alpha helix or beta pleated sheet. Then after that, the R groups interact further and form hydrogen bonds as well as ionic bonds, disulfide bridges. There's uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions of the R groups that'll eventually fold the pro uh, protein into its final three-dimensional shape. If this is something like insulin or amylase, a digestive protein that breaks down things like starch, this is the final structure of most proteins, and then it's ready to be used. However, some proteins will have a fourth structure called a quaternary structure, where there's more than one polypeptide chain that come together to form the protein. An example of this would be hemoglobin, which requires four different polypeptides to make the full protein. Now, as we're going to talk about in a few minutes here, um, most proteins are coded for by one DNA sequence. So one DNA sequence called a gene, making one protein. However, if we have a quaternary structure, if we have four different polypeptide subunits, that means we're going to have to have four genes to make four polypeptides that will come together to make one protein. So we can you know, have an exception to the general rule of one gene making one protein. And this is a review of Chapter 5 stuff. Chapter 17, from gene to protein. Remember the central dogma? We've already talked about how DNA making another copy of itself is called replication. This happens inside the nucleus during the S phase of interface. Transcription and translation will be today's topics, and the process of DNA making a messenger RNA um, copy is going to be called transcription. And then using the messenger RNA at the ribosome to make the protein is called translation. We found out a lot about how proteins work by finding out what happens when things go wrong. As you can imagine, if you can't make a protein and it causes a disease, then you can kind of link that protein back to the DNA codes that coded for the protein. And um, those kind of things uh, helped us understand uh, the role of proteins as far as phenotype. And uh, an example would be cystic fibrosis where the DNA codes don't make the right protein channel inside the lungs that allows salt to be pumped out. The water would follow normally by osmosis causing the, the mucus in the lungs to be nice and uh, runny. 
Um, if you don't have the right DNA sequence, if the DNA sequence doesn't work, then the protein doesn't work because you're coding for the wrong uh, amino acid sequence. And then the salt doesn't get pumped out, the water doesn't follow, the mucus builds up in the lungs. And that's the characteristic symptom associated with uh, cystic fibrosis, that mucus build up in the lungs. So some of these uh, diseases have uh, helped us understand the role of some of the proteins and then tracing it back to the DNA that codes for those proteins. In general, one gene, which is a sequence of adenines, guanines, cytosines, and thymines, codes for one polypeptide. However, and a polypeptide, once again, is uh, kind of interchangeable with a protein. However, there are some exceptions. For example, you really can't say one gene, one enzyme, because not all proteins are enzymes. So uh, don't make that mistake. Uh, some proteins, like keratin, which your fingernail is made out of, are coded by, for by genes as well. One gene, one protein is generally true. Uh, typically, in things like insulin or amylase, the digestive enzyme that breaks down starch, there's one sequence of DNA, one gene, that codes for that one protein. However, there are some proteins, like collagen and hemoglobin, that consist of more than one polypeptide chain. Uh, if you remember, the hemoglobin has four polypeptide chains. So you actually need four genes for the one hemoglobin protein that forms that quaternary structure. So those kind of exceptions uh, should be known as far as what we're talking about here. It's not an absolute rule that one gene makes one protein. There are exceptions to that, and you should be aware of those exceptions. Defining a gene is a, a problem because small genes can be difficult to detect. One gene can code for several protein products. Uh, some genes code only for RNA. Two genes can overlap. There are many other complications, like epistasis, where one gene will turn on another gene. Those kind of things make it a lot more complicated, and that's why people spend their lives studying genetics. We're going to stop at this point and get some general definitions for Chapter 17 from Gene to Protein. Let's title this page from Gene to Protein, Chapter 17, Transcription and Translation. This is page one. Let's get down some basic definitions. A gene is a sequence of DNA, A's, T's, G's, and C's, usually hundreds if not thousands of uh, nitrogen bases long. That codes for a protein, and you're going to learn how that happens uh, in this class, in this uh, lesson. Transcription is the process of making messenger RNA, mRNA, from a DNA template in the nucleus. Translation is the process of making proteins at the ribosome using messenger RNA in the cytoplasm. Here we have genes in the chromosome picture. Uh, remember, we have 46 chromosomes. Here we have a chromosome uh, shown just to represent what we're talking about. Remember, at the tips of our chromosomes, we have telomeres. Uh, I've listed that there. And uh, this is kind of how it would look. We'd have uh, A's, T's, G's, and C's uh, that would code for different uh, proteins. And here we have a gene for eye color, a gene for the enzyme to break down starch. Remember, enzymes are proteins that are coded for by DNA gene for earlobes, gene for hemoglobin. Now there's four genes for hemoglobin because there's four parts to a hemoglobin protein. Gene for keratin. All those different, there's literally thousands of different proteins that are coded for by your 46 chromosomes that are going to carry out um, the life processes to keep you going and to build all the things you need to build. Pause at this time if you need time to copy this down some more key terms. Let's write down what a triplet is. Triplet, tri is the prefix. There's three of them. Three DNA nucleotides. Remember those include adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. That codes for an amino acid. So it takes three A's, T's, G's, and C's to code for one amino acid in the protein. A codon is three messenger RNA nucleotides. Uh, and the difference between messenger RNA and uh, DNA is that in messenger RNA, there's uracil instead of thymine that we'll talk about later. Three messenger RNA nucleotides that codes for an amino acid. Basically, the triplet in DNA will be used to make a codon in messenger RNA, and then this codon in messenger RNA will be used to bring in the right amino acid at the ribosome. mRNA, or messenger RNA, sends DNA codes to the cytoplasm's ribosome to make a protein. The DNA stays in the nucleus, the ribosome stays in the cytoplasm. It's the messenger RNA that will send the codes from the nucleus to the ribosome in the cytoplasm. Then we have a new RNA called transfer RNA. 
or tRNA. tRNA, or transfer RNA, transfers amino acids to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm based on the anticode on, on tRNA. When we draw this picture, this will make a little bit more sense, but you should have this definition. There's one more type of RNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and the last one you've heard of before in a previous class called rRNA, or ribosomal RNA. If you remember, a ribosome is made up of two subunits, a protein and an rRNA subunit. And here we have another uh, word, anticodon. Anti means opposite of, so it's kind of like complementary or opposite of a codon, a messenger RNA for anticodon. Anticodon is three complementary RNA nucleotides on tRNA that brings in the correct amino acid bases uh, based on messenger RNA's codon at the ribosome. So basically, messenger RNA's codon will match up with an anticodon. Again, this will make more sense when we do a few practice uh, drawings. Then we have the definition of a polypeptide, the amino acid chain made at the ribosome that will fold to become a protein. Let's go ahead and pause at this point and get these definitions. And one last thing before we move on for page three, one gene, one protein, talked about that earlier, is the general rule, but some proteins have more than one gene. For example, hemoglobin it needs uh, four genes to make the four subunits that make up the protein called hemoglobin. Go ahead and pause and write this down. So now we're going to move from the nucleus to the cytoplasm to get that information from point A to point B. So the genes are located on the chromosomes, which are made of DNA and protein in the nucleus. The proteins are made in the cytoplasm. So how does the information get from the nucleus to the cytoplasm? Well, we have to send a messenger, and that messenger is RNA. RNA is similar to DNA. Um, it has three of the four same nucleotides, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. It has a different sugar called ribose instead of deoxyribose. And uh, it does have one different nucleotide, uracil instead of thymine. So this is a key idea. If you ever see uracil, you know you're dealing with, or you, you know you're dealing with RNA. If you ever see thymine, you know you're dealing with DNA. And we're going to go back to our notes and get that information down. All right, let's write down some information about RNA, or ribonucleic acid. In RNA, there's ribose as the sugar instead of deoxyribose found in DNA. The nitrogen bases, uh, we have uracil instead of thymine. And uh, the other nitrogen bases found in RNA are the same as DNA. We also have cytosine, let's write this down, guanine, and adenine. the same as DNA. Also, uh, RNA is single-stranded. As far as the base pairing rules, so let's go ahead and write that down. In uh, DNA, the adenine will code for uracil. Remember, uracil is replacing uh, thymine. Normally, thymine binds with adenine. And cytosine codes for guanine, just like uh, in DNA. So the first step in making a protein from DNA is called transcription. Now remember that DNA has two strands, and not both of them are used to make messenger RNA. One of the strands of DNA, and I'll always tell you which one that is, is called the template strand, and those are the A's, G's, T's, and C's that will be used to make our messenger RNA. The enzyme that's going to make messenger RNA is called RNA polymerase. Easy way to remember is it's in the name. RNA polymerase makes RNA. DNA polymerase makes DNA. Don't get those two confused. RNA polymerase is not used during replication when we're making a new DNA copy. And DNA polymerase is not used during transcription when we're making proteins. Here we have a drawing representing the DNA molecule being used to make our messenger RNA, which is single-stranded by the process of transcription, inside the nucleus of a eukaryote. At this point, we are going to draw a general diagram, a picture, of the process of transcription and translation within a cell. Here we have a general picture of the process of transcription and translation. It's a eukaryotic cell. Let's draw ourselves a nice big cell with a nice big nucleus. Here we have our DNA making some pre-mRNA, which is basically our mRNA, by the process of transcription. Then the pre-mRNA is going to be processed, that we'll talk about later, to make messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus and hook up to a ribosome. The ribosome will read, basically, the messenger RNA 
and the right amino acid sequence will be brought in to be chained together to form our polypeptide, which is the primary structure of a protein. The process of chaining together those amino acids to make our polypeptide protein is called translation. Over here is a description of how DNA triplets are used to make our mRNA codons, which are used to make our amino acid sequence in the protein. Copy this down and we'll talk more about that for part two. This ends part one of chapter 17.